This is a tutorial demonstrating how to connect to an Exceliglove data glove from MaxMSP. Uh, there is no object in MaxMSP which can connect directly to this, um, this data glove. It's a, it's a USB data glove, but unfortunately the high object, the human interface object in Max won't connect to the data glove. So um, you have to build your own object. And the easiest way to do this is using Java inside of MaxMSP, which is called MXJ, that's what it's called inside of MaxMSP. Um, it's very easy to do, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. The Exceli glove, the reason for using this particular glove, you can see I'm, I'm wearing one on my right hand here, um, is because it's the cheapest one on the market. It's about £30-35 pounds to buy. It comes with some very good documentation and an SDK which is all um, aimed towards Java developers, which means it's very flexible to use um, within a, a lot of different contexts, a lot of different environments. Um, everything I'm going to mention today should uh, theoretically work for things like processing as well, um, but what I'm going to run through is the procedure for getting it to run in Max. So this is the chain of how it's going to happen. The data glove is on the end. Java is going to um, manage the connection to the data glove, which is being worn by the user, and Java is then passing the information it gets from the data glove onto MaxMSP via MXJ, and then MaxMSP will use that data to do any number of things, to maybe play a virtual instrument or um, move an object in a virtual space. Okay, so the best way to make the Java class is not to make it in MaxMSP directly, but to make it in an environment called Eclipse. Uh, this is Eclipse here. I'm going to run through this very quickly, um, what the class actually looks like. This is the class loaded here. Um, however, I'm not going to um, explain to you every detail about how to make um, a Java class, and I'm not going to explain um, anything about making a MaxMSP um, patch. This tutorial presumes that you have a, um, a, a good experience of Max already. If you've not used Java before, that, that's okay because this class is very easy to make. Um, I'd never used Max um, and managed to get this working quite quickly. Um, the documentation that comes with the Exceliglove SDK is very good and the um, Java help that comes with MaxMSP if you follow the tutorials, it explains it very well. So as I said, this is um, Eclipse. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But the best place to start learning about Java and Eclipse is to follow this tutorial, which came up on the uh, Cycling74 um, Max forum, um, which is just a quite a short tutorial on how to install Eclipse um, on either OS X or Windows and how to get up and running with Eclipse, how Eclipse works very sort of basically. Um, Eclipse is very good because it every time you save something in Eclipse, if every time you save your Java file, it auto compiles a class. Um, so it's a it's a very easy way of working with Java. Okay, so first things first is follow this tutorial. This URL I'll put this on the web page where this um, video tutorial is going to be so you can click through to this URL follow the tutorial, install Eclipse um, it gives recommendations about setting up um, what's called a workbench which is a project folder um, somewhere on your computer which you should never change, you always work from that folder um, follow it to the letter essentially um, dedicate a folder which is going to be for all your Java classes once you've done that, you're going to need to configure uh, Max to point to that folder. Now the easiest way of doing that is if you go into the Cycling74 folder inside of the Max folder. Now I'm using Max5, but this will work equally well for Max4, um, absolutely no difference. So go into the Cycling74 folder, and in the Java folder there, you've got a text config file. Now you need to add a line to that config file. Uh, it's very easy to do. There's an example line about how you add 
the file. But before you change anything, make a copy of that file somewhere so that you can revert back in case you make some mistake. It's unlikely you're going to make a mistake because um, it's just one line. It's very easy to do. So this is the config file. The line we're interested in is uh, this one here. What you will need to do is you will need to copy that line and paste it again. You can see that I've already copied um, what used to be that line and changed it. The semicolon at the end and at the start, those are comments, so that line is at the moment is, is commented out. So get rid of the semicolons on your new line. So you can see the line starts exactly the same here, max.dynamic.class.dir. And the pathway you're going to put in is the pathway to your um, your your workbench folder that Eclipse is going to use. Now I've put my workbench folder in a folder called work on my desktop and you could link just straight to that Eclipse workspace and every project you do in the future it will just pull in every class and every class will work in Max automatically as soon as it's compiled. Um, I've not done that, what I've done is I've just pointed for the moment because I've only got one project in, in Java and I'm, at the moment I'm not making any others so I'm just pointing to my specific project my Glove project for Max 5 and I'm pointing to a folder in that which gets created by Eclipse called the bin folder which is where the class resides and the reason I'm doing that is because I only want to install one class in Max so once you've added that line save it, quit out of text edit or whatever you're editing this text file in and uh, restart Max MSP um, if you had it launched already and it should start picking up um, anything that's in that bin folder okay so once you've done that tutorial and you've set up your workbench and you've configured the Max um, configuration text file um, you should be ready to start actually making your class. So back in Eclipse, let me just open this folder here. Okay. So this is um this is my Eclipse workbench space as I said which is in my which is in my work folder. And um I, I made two because I've got two versions of Max. Um, and the one we're going to be working from is the Max 5 one for this demonstration. It should work exactly the same for both of them, but if you're working um, across two versions of Max, which I am at the moment, um, you'll need to compile classes for each one. Um, if you compile one in Max 4 and then try to use it in Max 5, it won't work. And vice versa, if you try to make a class um, for Max 5 and then try to use it in Max 4, that won't work either. So when you make your new project in Eclipse it will make um, you'll call the folder something and it will put contents into that folder it'll make a bin folder and it'll make a SRC folder by default everything else in here is things that I've put in and I'll explain that in a second Okay, so the SRC folder is the .java text file that you'll be working from this is the the sort of raw text inside of um, Eclipse, uh, the text file, it just has a, a .java extension. And every time you save that text file, it will save it here, but it will also auto-compile what's called a class, which becomes your object later on for Max. That class will have the same name as the Java file that you're working on. Now you can see that I've got two Java files because I was working on two different variants of how this would actually work. Um, the one we're going to focus on is this one called Excelglove Manual, which is the simpler and better way of doing it. So just ignore my Excelglove auto there for the moment. So that's the Java file you're working on, that's the class you're compiling. Now all of these folders and files, these are all part of the SDK that comes with the Excelliglove. Um, you'll get them on a, um, a CD-ROM with the Excelliglove. Inside of the lib folder, lib folder, um, you've got 
a lot of jars. Now one of those will come from Maxim SP. If you go into the Cycling74 folder and the Java folder inside of that, you'll find um, what's called max.jar. You need to make a copy of that jar and put it in this lib folder and then import it into your project. Now that tutorial I showed you on the um, website here, um, that will run you through um, how to do that essentially. Okay, so follow this is it explaining it how you import the jar and how you link to it from within your class. So as I said, follow this this tutorial which is very good to the letter, and then when you're done with this, you'll understand how to map the ideas in this tutorial to um, what we're building at the moment. So there's your max jar. The other jars that you see in this folder, those are all coming from the SDK, as I said, for the Excel glove. Um, you've got a specific one for OS 10, you've got a generic one, and you've got um, this H2 jar, and then you've got one called rxtxcom.jar. Now, when you're using your, your, your final object in Max, this one will cause problems if you're on OS 10. It'll give you alert messages saying that something is um, uh, not matching, a version is not matching. Just ignore the messages, it's not affecting how the object is going to work. Um, it has to do with um, the, the version of Java on OS 10.5 not quite being um, as up to date as what's inside of this jar, but it doesn't stop it from working essentially. So all the jars go into the lib folder. This DB folder, which means database, uh, you actually don't need this folder, it's the databases that come with the Excel glove. If you're using, um, if you develop your class further and you're using the gesture recognition that comes with the glove you'll need those databases but I've not used them, I've just left them in there for the moment in case I develop the class any further. The database utils is linked to that database folder so that carries over with that and the librxtx serial is a um, serial file for the rxtx jar that's in the lib folder. Okay, so that's where we're going to be compiling our class. Um, this is the final patch that I've made, which is going to be linked to that class.